What does the Bible say about justification? This is uh, part two in our series on justification. Uh, I had mentioned in part one that we were going to try to do this in three parts. It looks like we will probably have to do it in four parts. There is uh, one element of uh, the nature of justification that I uh, did not get to cover in part one. And so we'll be covering that here and then go on to parts uh, three and four, which will cover uh, the basis of justification and then the instrumentality of justification, which is uh, faith. Now, uh, the uh, what we looked at in part one was the nature of justification, particularly uh, as it relates to the definition of justification and its judicial nature. So the idea is that justification is a declaration of righteousness. It is uh, not, as the Catholics teach, a, a making of one righteous, but rather the, the declaration of righteousness that comes uh, on the last day. And what's happening in the doctrine of justification is it is that end time declaration is being moved forward to the present. It's being moved uh, to the time of faith, as we will see. Uh, we looked at also the definition of justification given by New Perspective on Paul, particularly that of N.T. Wright, where he, he basically uses two definitions uh, depending on what suits his purposes. Uh, and that is to say then that when we speak of justification in a person's life, we're speaking of an ecclesiastical definition. And he, he takes that then um, and at the same time, he'll use still the judicial sentence definition for uh, the last day. And we looked at the inadequacies of that as well. The idea with justification is that it always means, it always means a declaration of righteousness, whether or not we're talking about the context of the, the last judgment or the context of, uh, of what happens when a person believes and is converted. It is, in fact, uh, a, a, a judicial sentence that is given. Now, one other element of justification in terms of its nature that, that we need to discuss before we go on to, to speak about the basis uh, is um, what, what are the parts of, of um, justification or what are the, uh, the different aspects of the nature of it? Um, and basically uh, what I'm getting at here is that if, um, if you're going to justify a sinner, there, is actually, there are actually two things that have to happen. There needs to be a, a removal of uh, bad things that would lead to condemnation. That is to say, there needs to be forgiveness. Um, and there also needs to be a declaration positively of righteousness. So justification actually entails these two things. It includes the forgiveness of sins. It also includes, on top of that, a declaration of righteousness. Now, this happens all at once. So uh, it's they're conceptually distinct. But uh, when someone is justified, um, both these things are happening simultaneously. Um, and, and really, even in one act, we would say. But the idea, of, the importance of, of thinking about these as two conceptually different elements of justification is this. Um, if someone were to be simply forgiven, then uh, one would not then become righteous. One would become innocent. And so if you think about a, a judicial case today, uh, there is a, a person can, can be declared to be innocent, means he did not do the bad thing. And uh, this would then, of course, be good. Uh, a declaration of innocence means you are not liable to punishment. That's what a declaration of innocence would mean. So, And this is what a forgiveness of sins would mean as well. If God forgives your sins, you are no longer judicially liable to the punishments of hell. So that bad has been removed. However, with regard to justification, we're actually saying something even more than that. We're not just saying you are no longer liable to be punished in hell. Rather, we are saying... You now have the right for the reward of heaven. You now have, have a right to something, a, a positive, so to some positive blessing that's given. And this goes far beyond uh, just a declaration of innocence. Um, if, if someone were to be forgiven of their sins and you could say, like, well, now I know I'm not going to go to hell, uh, that would, if that were all that were done, uh, it is difficult to see how such a person could then say that they expect that God would grant them. Uh, eternal life in his presence forever. Uh, that is a reward uh, that cannot be simply assumed for a person that is innocent. It is the reward of the righteous. And so what we're saying with justification is, is that there is a removal of the bad forgiveness. There is also a declaration of good, that is righteousness, such that a person is no longer liable to punishment, but rather can expect God to grant them something on the basis of the declaration of righteousness. That is to say they have uh, a, a right to uh, a reward that they will, in fact, positively be with God forever and experience that, that blissful uh, joy. And that, so that's what we are saying uh, justification is. So there is this twofold element uh, to uh, the nature of justification. Now, the fact that this negative element is contained, so to speak, and I say negative not in the sense of it being bad, but negative in the sense of there being a removal of something 
uh, of something that is bad. Um, the idea is there's a, a negation of, of something, and that is the forgiveness of sins. Uh, the fact that that is in, uh, true comes from uh, Romans chapter 4, where uh, the Apostle Paul uh, writes this, What then shall we say that Abraham our father has, has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now notice positive righteous, righteousness is being described. We have the language of justification that's been given. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. Notice what, what Paul says next. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. And then Paul says, just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Then he quotes from Psalm 32 where he says, Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven. Are forgiven. So the, the proof of at least part of justification and the declaration of righteousness is with respect to uh, Psalm 32 where David speaks of the forgiveness of sins. Where David speaks of the forgiveness of sins. And then he goes on to say, uh, and, uh, blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. So there the, the idea is that the negative uh, is not given. That uh, the, the negative element of justification uh, is, uh, is, is established. The idea is that justification includes the uh, forgiveness of sins. You'll notice even throughout this, this passage, though, the positive element is really not far behind uh, because uh, Paul is speaking of faith being counted for righteousness, quoting from uh, Genesis 15, 6. And this is, again, contrasted in, in Romans 5, then, with the condemnation of Adam. So Adam is condemned. But in Christ, others are justified. We even get this, this idea of the positive element from the nature of uh, the word itself. Justification uh, is uh, related to words related to righteous. So it's not just innocence, but righteous. Uh, and then we see all throughout the scriptures as well that those who are justified have, in fact, a basis for a reward, that they, do, that they will, in fact, receive something positively good uh, from God and not just the removal uh, of the bad. So the Romans... The Romans 4 text proves uh, the, uh, the, that there is a negative element of justification in the sense that there's a removal of sins by, the, by forgiveness. And then many other passages will prove the, the positive nature as well. You think of, uh, uh, just to give an example of the positive element, Ephesians chapter 2, where those who are justified by faith uh, will have God show the, the abundance of his riches and kindness to them in Christ Jesus all the way to eternity. Uh, that is something that is uh, quite a positive uh, good. And so this is the nature of justification. We would say it is a judicial sentence. It is a declaration of righteousness. That means that there is a removal of sins and, uh, judicially. There is a forgiveness of sins. And there is positively, even beyond that, a declaration of righteousness. This means that a person is no longer liable to hell, to the punishments of hell, but rather can expect uh, a reward uh, on the basis of imputed uh, righteousness, and that reward is, in fact, uh, heaven itself, uh, such that, amazingly, God would be unjust not to grant it. Uh, God, in his justice, which is perfect uh, because of justification, demands that uh, every sinner who has received justification uh, be, in fact, given the thing that is due to them, because it really is due to them. Now, uh, the next question then would be, how is it possible that this could in fact be due to a sinner? Uh, if a sinner has sinned uh, very many times and he's converted, how is it that that sinner can then all of a sudden uh, uh, be in such a position that uh, God's justice even demands that he uh, be given the blessings of heaven into all eternity? And so we'll look at how that's possible. That's, uh, this is the basis of justification, uh, how it's possible that God could grant it. And uh, we'll look at that in part three.